Hello everyone, this is me Ostrak and today I'm back with another video of Scrap Mechanic. Now this would be first one of the series uh, on how to make realistic suspension in Scrap Mechanic. Since um, I, I've seen many vehicles in the workshop where um, people have tried to make realistic suspension and it didn't work out right or like they've glitched it, which is really easy to do in this game. Now this video is here for you to explain how you should do it right okay i'm gonna try to explain as much as possible but uh please forgive me since i i know myself i will do a lot of mistakes while explaining stuff so if you have any questions if you understand something feel free to ask um uh, but i'll try to explain as much as possible some like first episode is which is this one it's gonna be double wishbone suspension right uh, later on, it's gonna get really hard to explain. So if you don't understand double wishbone suspension, don't try to attempt to build others, uh, because it's it's gonna be really difficult for you to understand. Okay, first of all, I wanna explain how the double wishbone suspension works together, or is built up together. So they have um, the two wishbones, um, which are held in place over here uh, by bearings. You also have two bearings over here on the top. Those two bearings hold this red pi uh, piece here, which is uh, where you attach uh, your wheel to. It also has like a pivot point here. Um, and the spring, the spring which you can attach uh, on the wishbone, which you'll see in a bit. Uh, so let me show you some of the designs I have here. Uh, you can see right here, um, this is one of uh, many designs that I have built, but again, these are not perfect at all. Uh, some of them have some flows that I will show you. Uh, just th these are just an example. Uh, but yeah, so how would you work together? Uh, you see the two wishbones right here, the red piece, uh, and the wheel, right, and also the spring, the spring, and everything, right. So you see how it's built up like that. You see, there's bearing here, bearing here. Like there's the four bearings that you need, and the common mistake that uh, people usually do, like most of most people do that right, the first part, the green and the red uh, parts, they put them right together. But then they uh, make a huge mistake with the suspension, which I can show you right here. These are some suspension types that I've sh uh, that I wanted to show uh, that you should not build, except this one. This one is okay. This one is for beginners, which I also use even now every now and then uh, because of uh, lag issues uh, so anyways this is the common mistake people make they um, put the wishbones correctly except with the spring they do a, the mistake of not putting a bearing over here on the top which you can see right here I've done and also there's another bearing right here so I can allow oh can I hit the button Allow it to move downwards or like uh, adjust my height, but you don't really need that bearing right there, right? So that is the common mistake people do. Remember, you always need a bearing uh, on both ends of the spring whenever you're doing a double wishbone suspension. Always, always. So keep that in mind. Uh, but yeah, let me show you how this will work. If I can find my lift. Alright, so it goes up, up and down, see, like that, no problem, goes like that, you can see it, there's a like little problem here, like, it doesn't pivot right, because uh, it, it hits the um, the pipe, the wheel hits the pipe, so uh, later on in the other examples I have it a little bit better. Uh, this is the same design, except the spring is moved inwards, so this spring is set up to a uh, resistance of 3. And this one is set up to a resistance of 9. And still, the difference between the two is that uh, your wishbones are shorter, but uh, like n not shorter, they're the same length. Uh, but since your, uh, your spring is uh, brought inwards, uh, now it needs way more resistance to push the wishbone downwards because uh, it's way harder to push uh, a lever this is this is basic leverage um, examples. It's way harder for it to push downwards, uh, f uh, further towards uh, 
uh, the pivot point, then it would be uh, a little bit away from it. So the more, the further away it is, the the easier it is for the spring to uh, to, uh, to um, hold it together or like to push it downwards. The good thing about this is that it allows more more um, height uh, by w when it's like compressed. So that means um, you can compress uh, the suspension less, but yet get a lot more height from your suspension, which is good. But no, it's, you don't really need uh, that big amount of height. That is like, hold on, let me see. So it drops on. Okay, that is, uh, let me see. That is already one block up. Two blocks up. Three blocks up. Almost four blocks up. So that means you have four blocks of... Of, um... Of height adjustment, or height, uh... What is it called? Um... Suspension travel, right? Distance travel uh, of the suspension, then you would normally have. Um, hold on. It's gonna spring out backwards. Don't have it like that. Let's put it uh, like that. Okay. So we have one lock here, two, and the third one it already stops. So you see, there's. Um, I just added one block of travel distance by um, push, uh, putting the spring inwards. So again, but this is all uh, like leverage um, situations, like where you need to like think how you exactly want to position your suspension. Um, further on, we have different examples like this one. This is a little bit shorter. Uh, it has about the same amount of distance travel. Uh, now this one goes even further downwards uh, since it's positioned a little bit lower. Um, let's see how much do you, do you get? Uh, that is off block, and then it goes up to not that far actually, about two blocks, two and a half blocks. Um, but that is also not always the case. Again, these. Um, are kind of broken because the thing with this one is uh, that red piece uh, hits the spring but I want it to be compact so that's why I put it up together like that normally you would um, you should be careful by putting the spring on the outside instead of the inside like I've done in that vehicle right here you can see I put it on the outside not on the inside so it doesn't like hit each other like uh, the little wishbone um, that little piece and that little piece so they don't hit each other um all right so oh wait i'm the wrong one <laughs> uh this one though uh you see the pipes are moved uh inwards the wishbones and you can see i have a lot more travel on the um, on the thingy i can i can pivot the wheel way more so i can steer that is 60 degrees of steering and it's still not hitting the pipe right there you see so that's the positive about having it a little bit further away. You can, um, like, you have shorter um, wishbones and uh, you have like less volume of space you have to to go about, and it you still get a lot more steering. So it's it's more about like what you want from the suspension to do. Um, this one, for example, is also uh, volume friendly uh, because it's it's quite. Um, what am I doing? Uh, quite well put together. Hold on, I can I can see stuff. Um, right. Uh, can you can you change stuff? There we go. Um, right. So this one, this one is compact, volume friendly. Yet again, there's a problem with you be uh, hitting that pipe there. So it's not very effective, but it, at least if you want to like do a small one in a compact car, uh, you can do it like that. You can also like put a small wheel too. So it's like like that, but yeah, you can also do it 
like this. And one back, uh, one prank call after. Um, this is also a very small and compact uh, suspension S suspension type of double wishbone suspension, whatever. Uh, you can see. Um, now that one is a little bit lower to the ground, so that, um, you still get like you get about a, a block of uh, travel distance because if you have your uh, car set up that low you would hit um, the ground over here. So this is for like low profile cars. Um, it's not that ideal, but it's it's good enough, you know? It, it's, it depends, again, on what kind of a car you're building. Uh, this form, for example, would be uh, what I would use for off-roading, I, I guess. Uh, it changes uh, the, the amount of um, camber the wheel has. So camber means how straight the wheel is on the on this um, uh, direction, so if that makes sense. So if I push it upwards, it uh, gains negative camber, and negative camber means the the wheel is uh, the upper part of the wheel is going inwards. And the opposite would be if I do this. Uh, now it has positive camber. That means the inner part. Um, uh, the upper part of the wheel is outwards. So this is, for example, um, how a low rider would sit uh, in a in a high position on the front. Um, but yeah, this these are some of the suspension types. Um, now on how to build them, I I think it's fairly easy to understand. Uh, let's say this is your body chassis. Um, put it up like this you make sure again you know what actually I'll go out with one block uh, you put your bearings like this then like that then like that then like that this is a short one I guess a short suspension um, now normally what I would do is like this and then from here I go down and you have you can go up to 60 degrees of steering if you do it like this you see so now we have the four um, the four bearings right like that it pivots downwards from over here and from over here um, and you also get um, 60 degrees of steering with two bearings so that's that is how I make it um, some people do it completely different, which is okay, but this is my design, uh, normally. It depends on the situation, of course, as I said. Um, now you do it like this, and from here on you can either attach it to the chassis, uh, like this. Or, actually let me paint those uh, parts so you can understand what is going on. Right, like that. Or you can um, do something like... Um, something like this. Where your suspension um, can be adjusted. Because if you um, put a controller on this, uh, you can adjust your suspension. Same you can do with pistons. Uh, if you hold on, let me show you that this works. You see now it's pushing downwards. You can't really see that good. Uh, one second. Let's do like this. Right. So now it's pushing downwards, except that there's not enough height. Um. Right. There. Um. Right. Now it's pushing downwards. Right. You can adjust that. I can go down to 45 degrees. Now it's kind of hitting the, the wood here though. So what I can do is... Instead of that, I, I could uh, use a piston to push it downwards and that would go like... Uh, this. 
uh, anyways, yeah, you can see it working like that. So this is one of the suspension types I, uh, the well, wishbone suspension types that I would use normally. Um, and it's fairly effective. You can see it on this car. Works pretty good. Um, the phone is a little bit soft. Uh, but this car can go really, really fast. Really fast. Uh, and yeah. Also, the rear, fun fact about that, the rear is connected, which is um, with anti row. So that means if one wheel goes up, the other one goes up too. You see, both are cl uh, collapsing at the same time. I can show that by welding it to the ground. Like that. If I go up like this, you will see both wheels on the back will go up. That is called anti row, and I probably will cover that in another episode, but further on. So, yeah. Anyways, I hope you understood how suitable wishbone suspension works, if you didn't already. Um, and feel free to watch my other videos after this, if they have come out. Uh, which would be. The next one would be about thrilling suspension. So, enough talking. Thank you all very much for watching. Have a wonderful day, and of course, don't forget to build the right kinds of suspension in Scrap Mechanic, because life is too short to build them wrong. Bye!